Hey everyone, it's Jack, and today I'm out at the MX Linux website to take a look at MX Linux. This is a really cool distro that I'm super excited about. This is something that I found on DistroWatch. Actually, I've known about it a long time, but I really hadn't thought about it. And I was at the DistroWatch website and kind of noticed that it was at the very top of the popularity list. That kind of piqued my attention and made me say, hmm, Maybe I should take a closer look at this. So here I am. MX Linux is a Debian based release that's based on Debian 11 and actually the latest version. Plus MX Linux also has backports available by default and even to their MX repositories which have a lot of the latest and greatest software out there. So that's something that's really got my interest peaked too. So I want to download this and see what's so great about it. <laughs> we have XFCE, KDE, and Fluxbox as our flavors. And XFCE I think is the one I'm going to do because I did KDE in my last review. And I don't know much about Fluxbox other than it's I like a variation of Openbox. But the XFCE is their flagship. So that's one that has my interest at this time. And I'm going to take a look at it. So here again, I'm at the website and I believe MX Linux also is not based on systemd by default. However, the systemd files are on it and you can at boot up set it to systemd if you wish. So you do have options here. So it uses sysv init by default and then systemd is an option that you can enable in the advanced menu at boot up and I'll show you a little bit more about that during the review so anyway here we are at the home page MX Linux is a cooperative venture between NTX and MX Linux communities so it's a family of operating systems that are designed to combine elegant and efficient desktops with high stability and solid performance yeah that's always a great combination I think and then MX's graphical tools provide an easy way to do a wide variety of tasks while the live USB and snapshot tools inherited from NEX add impressive portability and remastering capabilities. Extensive support is available through videos, documentations, and a very friendly forum. I like friendly forums. That always makes things better. And then we have some notations here that showing the MX21 Oz ISO is now available as well. And I'll go into a little bit more detail with that in the review too. The Oz ISO has the latest kernel, or at least close to the latest kernel, uh, for people that need more hardware support for newer type graphic cards. You might have a specific situation, maybe uh, for video editing or possibly gaming. So that is another option which is nice and the Oz repositories are a big plus for certain people. But in most cases you probably won't even need it. And I would probably be one of those people myself. There's links available also to the MX21 Oz XFCE Release Candidate 3. And here's the XFCE desktop. I'm just going to go and download this right now. So scrolling back up to the download link here. Just going to hit download, going to download a copy, and what I'm going to do is similar to what I did in the last video, I'm going to install it onto real hardware and then review it from real hardware, but I'm going to load it in and do a parallel install on a VM so you can kind of see the install process uh, un hindered <laughs> from the VN point and then after I run through the install process because the installer is different than your average calamaries so I kind of like to just kind of run through that too so you can see that as well so let's get to it I'm gonna download this and I'll be right back okay here we are in virtual box and it looks like we have a virtual box video option here so I'm gonna go with that I guess I'm going to select that. That's kind of cool. So apparently MX Linux can detect if you're running in a virtual box. And like I was saying before, the install will be in virtual box. And then after that, we'll go on to a real hardware where I installed it onto an actual machine. So this is Wildflower is the name of the release here. That's pretty cool. 
And here we're coming into our full screen, which it went in right into full screen, which is pretty nice. I like that. So now we got our connection established and our full screen, and here we are. And wow, this looks great. I love that wallpaper too. That's really cool. Very consistent with Wildflower, the name. And it looks like we have our panel here on the left side, kind of like Unity. And there's a conky up here in the corner. I like that too. That's very cool. It's got the time and then the date. And then we have our Wildflower MX Welcome screen, which has all kinds of great stuff on it. That is really cool. And I'm pretty sure this Welcome screen is probably going to pop up after the install too. So we'll get to that. And I can see here user demo. They even put the passwords in here for your convenience, which is nice to know too. Demo and demo for the average user. And then if you need to go into super user or root, it's just root and root. Root and root. Root and root. And. <laughs> so let's get to it. I'm going to go ahead and hit this MX Linux, Linux installer here. So here we start out with the terms of use and it uh, looks pretty harmless. <laughs> And like I said, uh, by default, this is using SysV and not systemd. So that's kind of interesting too. SysV, if I remember right, is like the original service stuff that uh, was in Linux way back. So yeah, I think when you start a service there, all you do is type in sudo service, the name of your service and start or stop. Not a big deal. Let's hit next. And so our type of installation, regular install using the entire disk or customize. I'm probably going to go with just regular since we're on a VM. But if you were going to customize this, uh, let's just take a quick look. We'll go to next. And here you can see that we got our area here that we can kind of customize. And we got the whole disk selected here, which is ButterFS. So you would probably choose a root, I would assume here. And then here it's showing you that it's going to format it in the ext4 format. Now, if you were going to just choose one of these things like home, for example, let me just expand that a little bit. Let's say you had a couple partitions on here and you wanted to install your, set your home drive on a separate partition, but you didn't want to format it. Then under this format here, when we selected home, you see preserve here. So preserve means that it will not overwrite your drive. So that's good to know. And then if you did for some reason wanted to format over your home partition, all you have to do is just select something else like ext4 or the same butterfs and now it will format it. If I was going to go to the next step, then it would bring up a little box where you could look at the details. And under the details, it would tell you what partitions are going to be formatted and what aren't. So that's just, you know, a little FYI in case you're doing a little more complicated install and you want to have a separate home partition that you don't want to install over. And then you can also write in manually here. You can just put in slash home or slash Slut just slash for your root install and so forth. So easy peasy. Just thought I'd share that real quick. Let's go with regular install and then hit next. And you can also encrypt the disk if you want to. No need on a virtual. And then we'll go yes with formatting. And it gets right into the install. So this is cool. And by default, it's going to put grub in here. But I also want to mention, uh, I've noticed that some people have confusion during this install. When it gets to 94%, it just stops. And some people are confused, like, why did it stop? And then it sits there forever. <laughs> and it never goes anywhere. Well, I'll show you what the deal is. Actually, the simple is really the solution is really simple. And it's pretty obvious. So if you ever got stuck on it, you'd feel kind of dumb once you realized what the issue was. But I'll show you that. This is a very quick install because I had already installed it on my hardware machine. So I've kind of been down this road before. <laughs> so this is going to be very fast. And when it gets to 94%, I'll kind of come back. For now, I'm just going to pause. This will be at 94% in probably 20 seconds.
Okay, here we are, we're back and now we're at 94%. And as you can see, it says pause for required operator input. I think uh, a while back, maybe a couple years ago, maybe more. I think originally uh, there was a time where you didn't have the pause for required operator input in there, but still uh, it is a point of confusion sometimes for some people. And so all you got to do really is just simply hit next and then it's going to ask you for more input. And so here we got, it wants a computer name and the computer name could be anything. It can be MX or or Jack's PC, anything. Computer domain name, you can leave it as example or you can just call it something like Jack's domain. <laughs> and then work group. So Samba server for MS networking, that's really nice. And I just leave that checked, even if I'm not gonna be connected to a Microsoft network. I like having it checked anyways, cause you never know what the future holds. And it doesn't hurt anything by having it there. I'm going to hit next and here we are for our time zone and I'm going to go with that and New York is good. System uses local time. I kind of like 24 hour format so I'm going to go with that. And then you have our service settings here which you really don't have to change anything here but these are services that are running at startup. If you're a little bit more advanced and there's something that you want disabled in here this is the place to do it. And then we'll hit next. And now we'll just go with our account names and so forth. So for our login, I can just do Toadway. And a big password. And then if you wanna have a root account as well, just check the box here. Personally, I prefer having one and then just give it another root password. You can use the same password if you wish. It's all up to you. And then here you can auto log in if you don't like logging in, or you can save live desktop changes here, which are desktop modifications made in the live environment will be carried over to the installed OS. How cool is that? So if you are modifying things here, like let's say I took this bar and I wanted it on the bottom, I could move this panel down to the bottom and then check this box and then after the install that panel will be on the bottom. That's really cool. I like that. Excellent. I'm going to hit next. And now it should continue onward now that we answered all those questions. So this 94% is now turned into 95 and then it'll be 100. I'll restart and then I'll go on the real machine rather than restarting in the virtual and we'll go from there on real hardware and see how it went. Okay, we got it all installed and by default, automatically reboot the system when the installer is closed is checked. That's good, I'm gonna hit finish, let it reboot. Then I'll turn off virtual machine and go into the real machine. So I'll see you in a second. Actually, before I go into the real machine, just wanted to show you the MX Linux startup. So by default, we have the MX21 Wildflower here. So it'll do its startup. And then you get this, like a splash screen afterwards, which is blank. And I'm not full screen now because it's virtual box, but that's kind of neat too. You get this cool little splash screen and then it gets into your login. So that's kind of what it looks like when you boot up. So from there, I'm going to close down the virtual machine and then I'm going to log right into my real machine and we'll take a look at this baby. Okay, and here we are at our desktop. So we are now installed and wow, this really looks awesome. So let's jump over to our welcome menu and click on tools here and see what we got in here. So here we got our live USB maker, snapshot. CH Rescue, Boot Repair, User Manager, lots of stuff here under Tools, all kinds of things. Boot Options, Menu Editor. Let's take a look at Boot Options real quick and just kind of get in there. 
Wow, this is cool. So you can modify the grub boot screen here at startup. That's nice. We got enable, enable saving last boot choice. That's good. Enable theme, which is kind of what we saw just a minute ago, that linen gray kind of splash screen we saw. If we hit preview here and click that guy, that's what we saw at the boot up. So there is where you can kind of change your themes for your boot up. That's kind of neat. And then here, let's change our timeout. By default, it's five seconds, but let's make that one second. That looks good. And then here's where we can choose for our default boot. So let's for, say, for example, you wanted to switch over to system D for default. Then you would simply select that option right there. And then you would boot into system D. Then you would check this box, enable saving last boot choice. So if you check that box, then it'll boot to system D every time. And then, of course, you can do the reverse to go back to SysB. Nice. I like that. That's, that's a really great utility there. Really handy. And then we have NVIDIA driver installers, about a Codex installer. That looks interesting. Conky, date and time, system sounds, tweak, brightness, network assist. Wow, and we got software package installer. That must be the MX Pi there, MX package installer. So that is nice. Great welcome screen here. And even a device mounter. Nice. All right, we'll have to take a closer look at some of that stuff. And as you can see, here's updates. Looks like 39 new updates are available. So I'm going to click on that. That turns green when updates become available. Automatically answer yes to all prompts during upgrade. That's a kind of a nice option. I think for now I'm going to not check that because there might be a question that might be important. So I'll just leave that there and log in. And that all looks good to me, whatever it is. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So we'll run all these updates here and let that go. Very cool. So that ought to be pretty smooth. That'll give us the latest and greatest of everything. And while that's running, let's explore some more. Let's see what we got here. FAQ, user manual, always handy stuff, tools. Let's take a look at Tweak. See what's in Tweak. Your current panel settings have been backed up in a hidden folder called dot restore in your home folder. Nice, oh, that's good to know. So if I ever hose something, I know how to fix it <laughs> or at least restore it. So our panel is over here on the left, as you can see by default, display panel vertically. So it's kind of got that unity kind of positioning. If I go up here and click display panel horizontally, now it's at the bottom by default, or you can put it on top. Just hit apply and boom, there it is. Nice. Now you kind of got your standard three panel kind of look there. And there's your whisker menu. That looks pretty darn good. And what's this dock light options? Don't show the list. Now this is kind of unique. Show preview thumbnails for open windows. Whoa. Let me check that. Is that what I think it is? <laughs> okay, so don't need to hit apply, I guess. Let's see. Wow, I don't believe it. Check that out. I have never seen that on XFCE before. I didn't even know you could do Windows previews, thumbnail previews down here in the taskbar on XFCE. That is wild. I've seen it. I mean, other than using like Compiz or something, uh, I could never do that. That is so cool. Wow, gold star for MX Linux. That is neat. Jeez, all right. Okay, well, there's my first big surprise of the day and I'm loving it so far. Wow. So, huh, can't get over that. Okay, so that's how you do that if you like thumbnail previews. <laughs> Here's our theme tab. So if we go down here, uh, MX Comfort looks like our default. 
just going to open up the file browser there so we can see some changes and the folders kind of look nice already the icons but let's go with dark here dark perel i don't know how you pronounce that and then dark azul kind of has a blue and then elise is kind of red nice and there's graybird dark emacs wow that's pretty emacky so matcha dark azul that looks pretty nice that's got a nice blue and here's our window manager on this side that controls this stuff here so the top of your window see how it bright now and you got the green and that's our standard dark and that's still kind of green purel must be a a word for green azul looks nice i like that that's kind of a windows look there that kakodi i think i'm gonna go with the elise this dark elise that looks kind of cool and let's see what our icon choices are so there's a papyrus kind of a more solid blue that looks kind of nice a new mix and then we got this papyrus i guess that's what we had before originally then we got tango and e papyrus i guess the default's good with that i kind of like that brown and blue for some strange reason maybe because it's two-tone i don't know <laughs> But it's kind of got a uniqueness to it. Although new mix is really nice too. I don't know. It would be a toss up for me, I guess. And our compositor settings here. Our vertical blanking is set to auto by default. That's good. Maybe that means that uh, by default, open or OBS Studio won't be like tearing. And I forgot to check that. I'm actually running that now recording this video. Yes, smooth as a rock nice actually i mean smooth as silk <laughs> big plus when there's no screen tearing yeah liking it okay here we can choose our compositors too xfwm and compton i like that wow what an easy way to switch back and forth so if you did have some kind of tearing issues compton should solve that anyway and here we got our feature settings here for our compositor setup and i kind of like the defaults on these so they're all good one thing i like though is down here for windows during move i like to back off the opacity a little bit on that that way when i move this window i got a little bit of transparency in the background just kind of gives a little bit more coolness factor to the whole thing <laughs> and then under display here we have our hardware backlighting so i could back that off and dim the screen a bit however that's not going to show up probably on obs studio but i can see it here anyway <laughs> and the same with the software the x render brightness and by default it looks like it's right around 50 percent probably that's all good and then enable single click on desktop that's what's activated right now so if i single click a folder i'll go right into the folder if i go click like that and then oh by the way since i'm in here the pictures folder let me open this this is a screenshot of htop since i'm running obs studio i couldn't get an accurate reading so here it is at idle at 740 megs which is not bad actually before i launched the screen shot software it was 722 so pretty good resource usage there actually and then if you don't like the single click it's enabled by default here in mx but you can just simply uncheck there and then when you select it it won't launch but you have to double click it which i just did we go back out now if i click on a folder it just highlights instead of goes into the folder however let me re-enable this single click again real quick just want to show you something here apply it's not too hard to adjust to this because if you come over here and you just hover over a folder like this 
you can see there's a little bit of a delay. And when you hover over it, if I were to hold my control key down now, I can go to another folder and just hover. And just by hovering, it will highlight each one of these folders because I'm holding the control. So that hover kind of takes the place of a click. So instead of clicking, you hover. Now if I do this and I hold the shift key down, then wherever I go, it's going to select that whole range just by hovering. So I'm not clicking right now. So that's how that works when you're in single click mode. And that's actually kind of cool. It's kind of spoils you after a while, actually. <laughs> and so under others, that's kind of cool. Use Intel driver instead of default mode setting driver. So by default, it's in mode setting. That's why it's not screen tearing. Wow, and they're even referencing the Zorg Conf 20-Intel uh, Conf. That's pretty cool. Uh, I did a video on that not too long ago. Well, several months ago, probably. Uh, addressing that same issue. So that's kind of neat. Hmm. Never expected to see that. <laughs> cool. And there's our famous doc like. That's cool. Gave us our thumbnail preview. Still can't get over that. So the MX welcome screen has all kinds of goodies in here. This is really great. Popular apps, I believe, opens up our MX Pi, our package installer that is tailored for MX Linux. And this is really nice. Here by default, we got all our popular packages here that we can manage. And so all these different categories here. So let's see what we got in graphics. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking, uh, let's try installing Inkscape, the old standby. <laughs> so if I do Inkscape, then under popular, we have Inkscape here. And if I click on it, let's see if there's any info on this. Kind of like to see what version this is by default. If it's a newer one or an older one, doesn't really seem to be any kind of info on it. Hmm. Okay. Well, Click this guy. Okay, clicking the info button helps. Apparently that's a little link or something. Uh, but I'm still not seeing anything related to the version. Hmm. Okay, so let's move on. Let's uh, try maybe the MX test repo. That's supposed to have like the latest and greatest stuff. So let's see what we got in there. This is a little disclaimer saying that it's probably not on all the time. And you can always show, don't show again there, or check that. So here we got Inkscape in our filter, and nothing there. So apparently there's not a newer version available in the MX repo there. Let's try out the back ports. All right, there we go. 1.1.1-2, which is pretty much the latest and greatest, although the Dash 3 might be out. I think I remember seeing that on Arch. Let's see what we got in flat packs. I like flat packs, and I kind of notice they're available. There's Inkscape, and that should definitely be the latest and greatest, whether that's 2 or 3. I suspect that might be Dash 3. I think I'm going to install that. So let's go with that. See what we got there. Huh, okay, just showing that it's stable. And flat packs are generally a little more heavy when you're installing. There's more to install, but I like them. I like them because they're containerized and because they're always the latest. And if you're on a platform like Debian or Ubuntu, you don't always get the latest versions of stuff from the software repositories, especially the stable ones. So having a flat pack is a nice, safe way to do that. Very cool. So let's see if it installed, which I'm sure it did. And let's launch this guy and see what version it is. So that looks pretty new to me. And these are different types of themes you can use for, I like the classic, just the default settings. I'm going to save that. And then I'll just pick a video format style 720p there. Nice, and we'll go to help and about. And it's 1.1.1, yeah, 3, 3B. So, very good. 
Definitely the latest and greatest. Nice. A flawless headache free install. So we'll close out of that and explore some more. <laughs> so here's our desktop icons and let's see what's in our whisker menu. The whisker menu is set up in a default configuration where we have our categories here on the right side and our stuff on the left. A lot of things here. There's our conky toggle, so it's co toggling the conky up there in the upper right corner. You can see our time and the date, and then some resource usage. Memory is 12%, CPU, HDD, <laughs> even though it's an SDD or SSD. And then we got our device mounter. That's cool for mounting your iPhone or smartphone. Lucky Backup, Midnight Commander, which is a cool DOS, DOSy looking file manager. MX Updater. Okay, Screenshot, File Manager, XF Burn for D, DVDs and CDs. Then under Development, we got Genie and Icon Browser. Games, there's some cool games there. Looks like about four different games. Swell Foop, that's a cool name. Peg E. Now let's take a look at Swell Foop real quick, just to see what that is. Clear as many blocks as you can, fewer things. So apparently you gotta clear these out in groups and hopefully they'll fall into place if you take one out. Try that, yeah, there we go. Wow, that connected all the blues together. I'll click that, ah, the greens, pa, And then the blues, 79 points, I'm a genius. And lucky. <laughs> there we got graphics again. So Laz Paint. Wow. That's a app. I think that's made in Lazarus, which is a IDE development environment. Done a bunch of tutorials on those before. And I remember seeing Laz Paint, I think, as some of the example apps on the Lazarus website or something related. That's really cool to see that in there. I like that, impressive. And it looks like kind of a basic paint program, but a little better than MS Paint, I think. That's cool, I'll have to mess with that sometime. I like the fact that it was created in Lazarus. I'm reasonably sure it was anyway. <laughs> then under internet, we got transmission for torrents, and then here we got our Firefox. And let's see if that's the newest version. So we go to help and about Firefox. Yeah, that looks like the newest one to me, 95. Wow, very good. Glad to see that. So far, there's nothing in MX that I see as antiquated at all. In fact, if you want to be antiquated, it's a choice. And then I guess all the multimedia is next and wow, there's hypnotics. Yeah, that's always one of my favorite multimedia apps, I guess. <laughs> VLC is installed by default. Let's see if Hypnotics works out of the box. This is kind of a good way to just kind of test the networking and see how smoothly things are going. But let's just, uh, yeah, maybe Bloomberg and see what that does there. And you get the little eyeball as it's trying to find something and eh, nothing's coming in. Hmm. Okay. So maybe it doesn't work. Let's try CNN. See what that does. So, you know, <laughs> that's now, a there we go. Away. We got something. Kevin, read, uh, from and it's talking. It says that Trump failed to offer. Yeah. <laughs> so much news. It's confusing me. <laughs> ah, OK, well, that was cool. Hypnotics. Yeah, that's really a great app. One of my favorites. And we got MPV Media Player 2. Pulse Audio Volume Control. Simple Screen Recorder, that's cool. I love that app too. And under MX Tools, wow, a lot of stuff here. CLI Apt Base Package Manager. And there's our Device Mounter again, Job Scheduler. Live USB kernel updater, that's kind of cool. Uh, 
MX Codex installer. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Probably installs a restricted codex that maybe you don't normally get. Whoa, went right into the install. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking it was going to ask me if I was sure. Yes, they've been downloaded. All right, well, now I got the cool proprietary and other codecs that I normally wouldn't have. Nice. Then there's our live USB maker. That's cool. Menu editor, GPG keys. So if you can run into issues or any kind of problems, it looks like you got a whole array of tools here to deal with things without having to go into the console very much. Save yourself a lot of manual editing. That can be really handy. And this is our sound selector. So if you have more than one sound card, you can select it there. That's pretty nice too. Really cool. And MX user manager. Hmm, let's take a look at that. Because user management usually isn't very GUI-fied in XFCE. So nice. Got add user account, change your password, delete user account, rename the account. Very cool. And then under options, you can change your user there if you want to modify and change their group memberships and so forth. Really cool. Copy sync. So I guess you can copy a profile over to another one. Uh, add into a group. And then set your group membership. So there's me, Toadwick. And so if I wanted to take myself out of a group or put myself into another one, I can do it all right here. Very easy without having to use the console. Some would consider that faster, some would consider that a lot slower. <laughs> it's all on your perspective. I'm kind of a console guy, but I really like the fact that I can do that in a GUI, especially if I was kind of spacing out on what the command was. Here we got LibreOffice and PDF Arranger, QPDF View, PDF Arranger, merging, rearranging, splitting. Huh. That's kind of neat. And then we got our settings there and add block ASDL point to point protocol config. Wow, that's something I haven't seen in a while. Advanced network appearance, Bluetooth adapters. Hmm. Let's click on appearance. This is the XFCE default appearance here where you would set your themes and icons and all that style. We were adjusting it before in the MX version that let me set the previews, but that's the, uh, the default. We got our brightness, desktop, settings, default apps if you want to set your defaults, all these things you would find in your settings manager and more. And that's your device mounter. I keep looking at that. I just had to look at it. Uh, I guess it's not finding anything because it's already mounted. And then we got window manager, manager tweaks, might be worth a look. Yeah, and these are things I would probably just keep on their defaults. And these are kind of your standard XFCE features here that you would normally find in your system settings. And there's your compositor. So again, we kind of have the MXified settings and then the standard XFCE settings alongside, which is like here. And I got to tell you what I'm seeing so far, I really like the MXified. It's like they took XFCE to the next level. And I'm liking that. Just out of curiosity, I want to open this again because I want to see if those icon previews are animated or if they're just snapshots. Let's see. Ah, it's moving. It's not like smooth moving, but it's moving. That is cool. Wow, okay. Yeah, that was the other thing I wasn't quite sure about. I just kind of thought of that. So you do get some animation out of that. That is nice. I'm, in, I'm double impressed. You know, there's a lot of systems like Deepin that are not animated. They just give you the most recent snapshot from the last time you focused over it. So I am liking that. I just think that's too cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm easily entertained. HTOP. Let's click on HTOP. 
I know we already did a snapshot, but let's see what it's like. 1.6. Not bad, actually, because I'm running the OBS Studio. And typically when I run OBS Studio, I'm a little bit over 2 gigs, like 2.1, 2.2. So that is really impressive. I am liking that. Then back in our system. Got a lot of things here under system. Task manager. I always liked F XFCE's task manager. And time shift, which is really great to have for backing up your config. Switch user. There's our settings manager. So if I click on that, you'll see a more familiar settings, but wow, about me, cool. So here you can set your picture. So that'll show up in your login or also in your file menu, you'll see it there. So nice. I like that you can set your picture and I really don't have a picture now. So <laughs> otherwise I'd put one in there. Then you got our SysTray desktop. So if we click on that, we can probably change our wallpaper and stuff like that. You can also do that by right clicking on the desktop area. And let's see what we got here. The big B, it looks like a skyscraper. Yeah, nice. Now that's a building I can look up to. <laughs> and there's a duck in a LG filled pond. He's probably thinking, what a revolting development. That kind of looks like my home solar system from, uh, oops, you didn't hear that. And then we got flowers. And here's our wildflower background, which I really like. And this looks like a dimmer version, nice. I like that if you need something a little more subdued. And a, wow, water and a pond. That's a nice animated one there for MX. Another cool MX. <laughs> I was in the way. A building. And that's a nice one too. That's a very cool one. Even with a dark theme, that looks good actually. It seems to work. And the sky and ooh, this is nice too. Wow. Hmm. Now I'm kind of torn between this one and the wildflower background. Because wildflower is kind of my favorite, but that is really nice too. Hmm. Yes, that does work. It's not busy at all. But neither is this too much. I guess I'll go with that. That's still kind of got an edge. But it's a tough call. And then here we got our logout settings and restart and all that. And here's our clock with our with our calendar, nice. And then we got our display brightness and all that. And I know I'm in the way. I should scooch out of the way here. So there's our display brightness, unmount, Bluetooth enabled, no updates available. And then of course there's my OBS studio running and then our network settings here. And that's all looking good, wired and Wi-Fi as well. And then we got that and our volume controls. Very good. And then flat pack input devices are not flat pack. What am I saying? And then these are our workspaces. As you can see, they both have the same wallpaper. Now that other cool wallpaper I was looking at, if I wanna change that, I can come up here and I'm in my second workspace right now. I can come over here and uncheck this box that says apply to all workspaces and then check this guy. Cool, and now it should be a wallpaper for two, but if I go back to one, it's a, uh, what? Let me switch back. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we go back to one and then we got the wildflowers and on two, we got this cool one. <laughs> now I can enjoy both. So that's how you get separate wallpapers. If you wanna have different wallpaper on each workspace instead of the same one, that's how you do it. Nice. Let's jump into our console here real quick because I wanna see what our kernel is. 
we'll do a uname hyphen r and it's 5.10.0-9 all right so that's a good stable kernel there and let's do a neo fetch and so here we can see we're running the N mx linux on a dell inspiron and 5.14 for our bash xfce 4.16 with the xf window manager 4 liberation mono so yeah looking good now let's go over here and you know by default we got our categories here on the right and our stuff on the left our apps i kind of like it the other way around though that's just kind of me it's more traditional in my head <laughs> So if I go to properties here by right clicking on the menu icon and let me just close that real quick and if I come over here if you look down here where it says position categories next to panel button right here we need to click that if we click that I believe that's going to reverse those categories around let's take a look yeah there we go so now i got my categories over on the left so if you like your categories on the left instead of the right then that's all you got to do to kind of reverse that and then here it's got show category names which those are all defaults that i like and here's where we can switch our panel button in case you want a different graphic down there and for behavior by default it's switch categories by hovering which is nice and most apps your distros they don't have that checked by default i'm glad to see that checked that switches the categories just by hovering and then let's look at our panel preferences so if we go up here everything is looking good our size is 35 pixels if we wanted to make that smaller we could just tweak that down or tweak it back up that's how you adjust the size easy peasy and if we wanted to change the length, we could just kind of tweak that out like that. And now it's shorter. If we wanted that in the middle, kind of like a plank panel or like uh, you'd see on a Mac, uh, we'd have want to come up here and unlock the panel. And then there's a little grabber here on the side. And we just pull it out like that and we can just center it. And then if you wanted to get creative, you could just kind of tweak your icons to be in the middle and stuff like that. Or you could just download Plank and install Plank. <laughs> but just thought I'd show that to you anyway. And there's our dark mode setting. We're already in dark mode, so that's not going to change. But that's nice to have if you have a light theme, but you want a dark menu with a dark panel bar, then you can use dark mode with a light menu, with a light theme. Okay, so let's add something here. Let's put in um, maybe a show desktop icon. So I want to add new panel items and we'll click show desktop, hit add, and there it is. By default, it shows up down there on the edge. If for some reason you wanted that somewhere else, it's easy enough to move. All you got to do is right click on it and then just drag it. Select move, of course, and then just drag it where you want it. Like say you could have it right there. And then we'll right click move and then set it back there to put it back where it was so that's how easy it is to move stuff around easy peasy i really like the xfce panel and then i'm just going to select lock again so things don't get moved accidentally and there you go now when i click on it i can see the desktop click on it again and it brings the windows back so essentially what it's doing is it's minimizing all the open windows and then maximizing them again there's my iphone got that hooked up and it's nice to see that it just detected that right off the bat i didn't have to install any software at all for that well that's really nice i'm liking that then under system if we go down to uh where is it i saw it before and i wanted to share it with you let's put a kernel yeah there it is live usb up kernel updater this is kind of cool this is a utility that if you wanted to change the kernel in your live version you could actually plug in like i got my eu drive plugged in 
right now. And so if I wanted to change the kernel to like 5.15 or something, I could run it through here and change it on my live version. And then when I run live, I could have the newest kernel in there. <laughs> so that's kind of cool too. And it's also easy enough to update your kernel if you wanted to do that in here. However, you could lose stability. I probably wouldn't do that, but you can go out here if you got to have a new kernel. If it's that important, you can go here. You got the Oz ISO, which they say is now available as of November 22nd. And it's got the 5.14 kernel. And it's got the latest Vulkan and Mesa XORG and all that in there. AHS by design is a little bit on the cutting edge. So that's really cool. But if you don't need the newer open source graphics stack, then there's little point in using Oz. So it's really kind of geared towards uh, somebody that needs uh, the latest graphics features in their hardware for doing some specific things. And it says, keep in mind users of the mainline MX releases can always enable the Oz repository via MX repo manager and do regular updates. You'll keep your 510 kernel, but you'll get the later Mesa XORG and Vulkan drivers. So that's good to know. And then we got our thoughts down here. There's Alberto. Yeah, you preach it, Alberto. <laughs> nice. And that looks like pretty good advice there. Uh, I usually suggest people to try the main releases first before using Oz, but most people are not really going to benefit from this over the other. So I would say just try both. <laughs> All right. So I think that's going to cover it. I got to tell you, this MX Linux, Linux, I can see why it's number one on distro watch right now because this is an incredible Linux and I still can't get over the fact that I got file previews in the panel on XFCE. I've never seen that other without using comp is or something to that effect, some kind of third party help. But they have kind of done something in compositing. And I'm pretty sure that's not a default in any XFCE install because I think I would have seen that before. <laughs> now, if it is, then my bad because somehow I missed it. But I really like that. And to me, that seems like it's unique to MX Linux. MX Linux is just a, a really over the top impressive install. You got the stability of Debian. However, you can even right out of the MX repos install cutting edge newer software that still doesn't give problems to the 5.10 kernel. So I really like that a lot. And I think this is something that could be a great daily driver for many, many people, even me. I would use this as a daily driver, absolutely. And I have a feeling that the KDE version is probably just as good, maybe even better. So I just can't say it enough. Absolutely, this is a daily driver that will just make you happy for years to come. You really can't go wrong with this. I don't see any negatives to this. I know sometimes I run into things that have cons and it's like, ah, oh, you know, I wish I could do what this other distro does, but it doesn't. And then I gotta modify it to get it that way. And so everything seems to have a con. And there's probably one here hidden somewhere but a lot of times I will pick up these little cons right off the bat pretty quick when I do a review and I'm not seeing any here. So yeah, you got me MX. This is great. Absolutely five plus stars on this. Double thumbs up. So go for it. <laughs> and with that, I hope this review was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.